Hi, my name is Andy Payne and today I want to take you through a quick workout which looks at ways in which we can assess our capacity to balance, the importance of balance in our day-to-day -day lives as we move around, as we go out to the shops and as we get around our own home environment. So predominantly the areas of the body that I'll be focusing on today are the core muscles, the legs, the glutes, also known as our butt cheeks. These are really important. They create power as we walk and as we go through the gait cycle. And we'll also be looking at how we can build confidence so that our balance improves. It's really important to acknowledge that whilst we may want to improve our balance and we may struggle with confidence around our balance, balance is a skill and much the same as any other skill, the more time that we invest in improving our balance skills, the better they will become. So don't be disheartened if you struggle, if you wobble, that's actually part of the body's natural way of proprio-recepting and creating balance, sensing where our body is in a given space. Also really important to acknowledge that you must remain safe and as part of that I will be using some chair-based exercises to support confidence and balance and I will at times be putting the chair to one side to make sure that I'm safe. So join me. Andy, teaching on behalf of Parkinson's Care and Support UK. So the first thing I'm going to do is test my balance. And the simplest way to do that is first of all standing with both feet together. As you can see with my hands down my side, by my sides, I'm perfectly able to do that. For some of you, you may already be finding that you are wobbly. Don't worry. It will become easier to stand in this position with practice. Okay. The next stage of challenging around balance is what I call half and half. So I'm going to take one foot in front of me and I'm going to place the other one halfway beside it. So this is what I call half and half. So if I look at my feet, both of my toes are pointing forwards. I have got one set of toes tucked into the side, the arch of my foot. And again, I can test my balance. You may again be wobbly. And if that's the case, I would encourage you to stick with the chair based exercises at this time. Thirdly, I'm going to do a pigeon step and that's where one foot is directly in front of the other. If this is my heel and these are my toes, it's heel to toes. This is the most difficult of the balance assessments. Okay, as you can see, I'm slightly wobbly. That's okay, my body is sensing where it is in a given space. And I could indeed hold this for 10, 15, maybe 20 seconds. So that's how we assess where our balance is at the current time. If you can do this heel to toe test for 20, 30 seconds, then you can certainly progress onto a later video where I'll be doing standing balance exercises. But for today, at this moment, I'm going to focus on seated exercises to support my balance skills. So join me. So first of all, I'm going to start in the chair. And we can indeed begin to tax and challenge our core muscles simply by sitting away from the back of the chair. Temptation often when we're given a chair to sit in is to relax into that chair and put our back 
to the support of the chair and that will stop all of these core muscles from firing. So I'm sitting in the front half or third of the chair and that is the first way, the simplest way that I can start to challenge my core muscles. So believe it or not, just doing this for a period of perhaps five minutes, building up to 10 minutes a day will help us to integrate the core into our posture and then in turn will help us to balance as we move about our day to day lives. Moving on from here, what we can do is just start to lift our heels. So lifting both heels up and lowering. And the reason for doing this is that our first point of contact with the ground is our feet and from there our feet to our ankles and it's our ankles that we are mobilizing as we lift the heels we do that with the help of the ankle joint and that puts the calves the lower back of the leg into contraction so stronger calves stronger ankles mobile ankles will give us the support and help that we need for balance. Lifting and lowering. Perhaps if I put my hands on my knees, you can see that I'm lifting and lowering. Okay, let's do another three of those. And three, two, and one. Don't forget that all of these exercises can be made smaller or slower if you should need to. Moving on from here, I'm going to lift the whole of my foot off of the ground and bend the knee, bringing that in towards the chest. That will work for me twofold as I bring the knee into flexion, into a bent position, as I also flex at the hip. And as I lift that leg off of the ground, my core muscles are working again to support me. Lifting and lowering. And if that's too much for you, you just lift very slightly and lower again. The key with this exercise is not to allow yourself to fall backward. So without contracting the core, this would happen. Okay, the aim is support the core, pull everything in around your spine and bring that knee up towards your chest. Let's do that three more times. Breathing normally throughout, please. Excellent. Let's go from this side over to this side and you may find that one side of the body is easier to work with than the other. That's quite natural. But you will want to strengthen your weaker side. So the body is symmetrical. We have limbs on both sides of the body. If I notice that my right leg is not as strong as my left, then it's this one that I need to work on. Let's do that once more. Excellent. Okay, from here, Let's go back to our heel lifting, lifting and lowering, lifting and lowering. So these exercises may seem very simple. They are a great basis for our core work, but also our postural stability and our balance as we move around our day to day lives. Lifting and lowering, lifting and lowering. As I said before, if you need to make these exercises smaller or slower, then please do. And from here, let's go back to bringing that knee in and lowering. And then we might go to alternates. So we're now working unilaterally. That will fire up the neuromuscular pathways the messaging system between my brain and my limbs. 
And as you do this, you'll feel these big quad muscles work. Very, very important for us, uh, particularly in climbing the stairs, for sitting down into chairs, for getting off and off the, on and off of the loo. Uh, perhaps if you're getting in and out of a car seat, these are really important muscles. And notice that right the way through, I'm keeping these core muscles nice and tight, everything pulling in towards my spine. One side and then the other. And again, what you can see happen sometimes with this exercise is as I lift my left knee, if I don't support through my spine, I'll tip over to the opposite side to try and counterbalance. So sitting up nice and tall, knee comes in, shoulders stay square as they are now. Excellent, let's do that once more on each side. And so today you'll notice that I'm working in sets of three, perhaps I do 10 or 12 lifts on each side. I do that three times over and I alternate that between two different exercises. So going back for the third time to our heel raises, lifting and lowering, lifting and lowering. And again, we could do that one side or the other, one side or the other. And if you find these exercises too easy, there will indeed be a second balance video where we'll be working from a standing position. Excellent, and for the last time then, we go to our knee lift, pulling in and in, in and in. All the time I'm working to keep my shoulders square and my core is supported. If you find that you've got back pain during this exercise, make the movement smaller or slower. It may be that you just fractionally lift the foot from the ground to start with and then you build up into something a bit bigger as your limbs get stronger. Four, three, two, and one. Lovely. From here, taking the hands onto the thighs, lift one foot and lower, lift the other foot and lower. Lifting and lowering, lifting and lowering. Again, I'm sitting up nice and tall throughout. This strengthens our quadricep muscles. Big strong muscles in the front of the upper leg. So four of those muscles predominantly help us with this flexion of the knee into a straightened leg position. And four, three, two, and one. And the next exercise I'm going to do is going to be a slow march. So the way to do that, I'm now gonna work the upper and lower body, coordinating between one shoulder and the other leg. It's nice and slow. And again, you'll feel these core muscles working. If you're feeling this is easy, then by all means pick up your pace. But remember to keep your back away from the support in your chair, sitting up nice and tall. Well done, notice that I'm looking ahead. You may also feel that your heart and lungs begin to work a bit harder with this one. 
because I'm taking the hand up above the head, that will really tax my heart and my lungs to work a little harder and to get the oxygen into my body and pump oxygenated blood around the body. Well done. Let's do four, three, two, and one. We'll go back to the straight leg lift, lifting one side, then the other. Again, if you can only lift a small way off of the ground, that's absolutely fine. We can build up to something bigger at a later date. And that's the wonderful thing about our body, guys. The more you challenge your muscles, the more they will be able to do, the stronger you will become. And we call that stimulus. We stimulate the muscles, we nourish, we hydrate, and we allow them to rest and recover. Those muscles will come back stronger, which I think is quite a miracle. Lifting one side, then the other, one side, then the other. Going back to our slow march then. And again, progression. Progression is absolutely key in these workouts. We start off with something that's relatively simple, then we try something a little harder and a little harder. We find something that works for how our body that challenges us, but keeps us safe. This time then, I'm gonna go for two marches on one side, one and two, swap, one and two. And there is, of course, balance required for me to lift one leg off of the ground. Yes, I am seated, but I'm looking to support these muscles and challenge my balance skills over time so that I have the confidence to come out of the chair and do exercises without being sat down. So to do them standing up. One and one, one and one. Well done. Keep going guys. Challenging the brain as well. Andy's brain's working hard. One and one, swap, one and one. Always reminds me of uh, perhaps a train driver pulling the chain to sound the horn, or perhaps even one of the old big king cab American truck drivers doing the same thing. I have a simple mind. I like to think of these fun things as I do my exercise. Good. Four. Three. Good, working hard to keep those shoulders still and square. Two and one. Excellent, going back for the last time to our foot lifts, straightening the leg, feeling these quad muscles contract. I like to put my hands on my body to feel my muscles working. I think it's really nice to know that your muscles are doing what they're supposed to. Lifting and lowering. Lifting and lowering. You will sometimes hear my joints crack. I am very lucky that when my joints crack, it tends to be a release of gas in the synovial fluid around the synovial joints. And that's a bit like um, air pockets that get into the lubrication uh, membrane between my joints. I'm very lucky that I don't suffer any pain uh, of course, if your joints crack and they do cause pain, then do seek advice from a medical professional. One and one. And again, we could go to doing that twice on one side. Core muscles working. And one, swap. One and one, swap. Excellent. All the time we're staying away from the back of the chair. Well done. Keep working for me, you're doing really well. Safety is always first, so the weather now is getting a bit warmer. If you need to take breaks, you need to get water, then please do. Your safety always comes first, particularly 
when you're doing exercise. And for the last time, over to the other side. Okay, let's go on to two more exercises. Before I do that, I've spent quite a lot of time sitting up tall. I am conditioned to do that, but for you guys, perhaps if you're feeling tired, your back is feeling a little bit achy, one of the best things to think about we can visualize is having a drawing pin through the belly button, pulling my front and back muscles towards my spine, and then also things pulling in around my middle, but at the same time making sure that I'm able to breathe as I focus on those core muscles working. From here then, if we're feeling a little bit tired through the back, perhaps we'll curl down. So I'm gonna bring my chin onto my chest, first of all, and then I'm gonna think about every single vertebrae in my spine rolling down towards the ground. Make sure your bum stays in the seat and have a little wriggle and jiggle. It's one of my favorite terms. I like a wriggle and jiggle just to let go of some of the tension that we're creating in the body as we exercise. From here, a really nice safe way for me to sit up nice and tall again is to walk my hands back up towards my hips, shoulders back and down, and we are ready to progress and do some more exercise. Now, another thing that we need to think about when we're working with balance is we need to think about hip stability. So one of the ways in which we can create hip stability is to move the hips in lots of different directions. The hips are one of the deepest, most mobile joints in the body. And all too often we spend time in this forward uh, propulsion, which is required for walking. We don't often take the hip out to the side. And so that is one of the exercises we're going to do and alternating that with what I call hip clocks. We'll come forward to 12 o'clock, round to 11, 10 and nine, okay? If we're coming back underneath the chair, we can do that. Just don't step very far back at all. We don't want to overstress this knee joint, okay? Before we do that, we're gonna go on to leg abduction. And so what that means is I'm gonna take my leg away from the medial center line, middle of the body, out to the side. And as I do that, if I now look over the top of my knee, my toes are still in line, okay? And that is challenging the medial glute. So that's one of our side butt cheek muscles. Back to the center line, out to the side. And in other videos, you'll have seen me do this with a resistance band across my thighs. If you want to do that, by all means do. Stepping out and back, hips face forward. Core muscles are contracted, but I'm managing to breathe as I would normally. Side and back. Now, if you've got, uh, if you're at home and you find that movement is difficult to create, you may uh, put your foot onto an A4 piece of paper and slide it out across the ground. Just make sure that the limb stays in a neutral position, knee above toes, and from experience, make sure that your floor is nice and clean so we don't scratch the surface of our floors in our home, okay? Over to the other side and back, side and back. So here we're looking to create stabilization of the hips. Side, middle, side and middle. You may feel that stretching through the front of the hip joint, through the groin. Again, if the movement needs to be smaller for comfort, by all means make it smaller and build up to something bigger over time. Side and back, side and back. Okay, let's now look at our clocks. So both toes are pointing forward. I step out to 12 o'clock. I'm imagining a clock face on the ground in front of me. 12 o'clock, back to the middle. 11, back, 
10 side, same sort of abduction plane that we just did, 9 o'clock, 8, 7, and 6. Okay, notice the 6 movement backwards under the chair is very slight to keep my knee joint safe. This is 12, out to 1, 2, abducting the 3, back slightly for 4, 5, and 6. Now, if I was sat too far back in my chair, I find it very difficult to get the foot back underneath the chair. So again, it's a good reason for us to sit in the front half or third of the chair. Let's do that again, 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10, 9, 8, and back for 7, and 6, very small step back for 6, 12, 1, 2, abduct for 3, back slightly for 4, five and six. Okay, let's do that one more time on each side. 12 o'clock, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7 and 6. Last time, 12, 1, 2, Three o'clock, back slightly for four, five and six. Excellent. So we've looked at core strength, we've looked at strengthening the legs, we've looked at glutes as we step into these different movements. Glute max, the biggest fleshiest uh, muscle, is hip into extension. Glute med is hip into abduction out to the sides. And so we are working to support our postural balance with these exercises. So from here, let's move on to doing some stretches. And again, I'm gonna stretch my calf and, and then I'll stretch hamstrings. Then I'm gonna do the back relaxer again. And that's pretty much our seated balance-based workout finished for today. So the first one, Lifting heels, first of all, onto my toes, and I'm gonna lift my toes as well. Heels and toes, heels and toes. So I'm literally just rolling, toes lifted, heels lifted. Toes lifted, heels lifted. using my hands just to show you the sort of movement that I'm looking to create with my feet. You may have also seen a video of me doing the pound hotspot exercise. That would work really nice in this balance workout as well. Heels and toes. That's my calf muscles stretched. Let's go for hamstrings now. The way I do that is to take both hands onto one knee, stretch the other leg out nice and straight, very slightly soft knee so that I'm not stressing the ligaments and tendons here. Both hands onto the bent knee, keeping the back straight. I'm gonna come down through the hips and I'm gonna feel a stretch from the back of this knee up towards my glute. These stretches can all be held for up to 30 seconds. In the videos, I tend to do it for a little bit less time, purely because it doesn't feel like it's offering very much entertainment to you guys as you watch at home. But certainly, when I finish, you could go back through these exercises, these stretches, and do them again. Swapping over to the other side. Nice straight leg coming down. I can feel that stretch from the back of this knee up towards my glute on this side. I take both hands onto the bent knee and that just protects the base of my spine. Uh, 
Okay, from here again, we're gonna go through the curling down of the spine to relax the back as we've sat up for such a long time. Curling, 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 curling. And the position I'm looking to create in my back is an arch. Remember that the spine is a stack of vertebrae. Each one of those uh, vertebrae is a joint. It has the capacity to move. So whilst many exercises are done with a straight back, it is also important to know that the, the spine can curve and that both of those have their place in our fitness regimes. So I bring my chin onto my chest, curling down, curling, curling, curling. Now I'm looking at the space between my feet, keeping my bum in the seat to remain safe. And then I'm coming back up nice and gently. Let's do those exercises again. So stretching the calves and the shins, calves and shins. So I'm doing heel lifting and toe lifting, heels and toes. Excellent, well done. Once more of each, heels and toes. Hamstring stretch, one leg straightens, both hands onto the bent knee, coming forward and down. The angle changes in my hip, not my shoulders. I'm keeping my back nice and straight. Bring my chin towards my toes to feel this stretch back of the knee up towards the bum. Holding for just a few seconds. You can practice for up to 30 seconds. And swapping to the other side. Straighten this leg, both hands onto the bent knee, leaning forward and down. Sitting up nice and tall, and for the last time, I go through my spinal rolling, curling down through the spine, looking at the space between my feet. Holding for a few seconds, walking the hands back up, sitting nice and tall, have a little wriggle and jiggle to finish your session. So that is our seated balance exercise workout on behalf of Parkinson's Care and Support UK. Thank you for watching. I'm Andy. I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.